Hey guys, Eric here. I am out in the wild on a very cold and fresh German morning. And I want to give you the 10 reasons why I chose the Sony 7R3 over the Sony 7 III. Now, if you saw my video last week, you saw me pit the 7 III against the Fujifilm X-H1. And in that video, I found that although the Fuji felt a little better in the hand, it had some manual dials, which I like, and I think it does have better color straight out of the camera. The 7 III had better video quality, it had better image quality, and overall, I think it's a better camera. It also performs extremely well in many different lighting conditions. So now I'm addressing the question that all of us have on our mind. Well, how does this camera compare to its big brother, the Sony a7R3? And I've had the chance to go around and shoot with this camera. And I think it's safe to say now that it's the camera for me. And now I'm going to give you 10 reasons why that is. Number one, image quality. Now, a lot of people say that you don't need those 42 megapixels unless you're going to make very large prints. Now, I don't think that's the only thing they're good for. You know, with a higher megapixel resolution, you're also going to be able to pull more detail out of your photographs. Now, that's really cool if you're shooting landscapes with trees because, hey, the details are the leaves. Or if you're shooting different fabrics, I mean, the textures are, are the details. Um, the details are what make a photograph sometimes. So I think having those extra details is pretty cool. Check out this example. I was focusing on these leaves. Now, if we zoom in, the difference might not be super apparent at first, but you can clearly see that it's just on the border of what the 7.3 can handle. It's starting to get slightly unsharp. Whereas on the 7R3, it is still razor sharp. So for me, it is worth it to get the R. Number two, build quality. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the shutter on the 7R3 is actually set for 500,000 accusations. Now, if you compare that to the 7.3, it's 200,000 accusations. Now, that's a huge difference. That's one and a half times more life that you'll get out of your R. On top of that, though it weighs 25 grams more, the back plate of the R is built with forged magnesium. Compare that to the 7.3, it's made of plastic. Number three, cropping. Now, another thing that's good about those extra megapixels is that you can crop aggressively. I'm not saying that you should always crop or that you need to always crop, but the ability to do it is there and it's pretty impressive. Check this out. So here's the giant file size of the Sony A7R 3 And now you can see if I crop this much, I am now at the resolution of the Sony a7 III, which is pretty incredible. And I can crop this much, and I am still at the full resolution of a 4K screen. Now that gives you a lot of options. You can really transform a photograph into another one. Or if you don't have the right lens with you, you can crop in and get a little better telephoto. Number four, the EVF. I am so happy to say that the electric viewfinder on the R is incredible, it is much better than the 7.3. That means I get 3.6 million OLED dot display on the R with a 120 frames per second refresh rate. If you compare that to the 7.3, you're only getting 2.3 million dots in a 60 frames per second mode. Now, that's a huge difference, and since I always use the electric viewfinder when I'm shooting, I can really notice this, and it's something I appreciate. Number five, kind of on the same tone here, the LCD screen. Though neither of them can flip to the left or the right, there's no change there. The dots on the R have increased to 1.4 million, whereas on the 7.3, they're at 900,000. Now, if you shoot primarily with the screen, this is something you might notice. It's also useful for reviewing photographs. Just another point for the R. Number six, pixel shift. Now, if you already have the 
a7 III, this is something you might not have heard of, and that's because it's not on that camera. It's a feature that came to the 7R III. Now, what it does is it shifts the sensor one pixel in each direction and takes a photograph. These four images then can, then can be combined later in post to give you a super high structural detailed photograph. Now, this is something that's really useful in things like architecture and still life, um, but it doesn't work when there's any motion in the photograph. That means if there's people walking around, if the water is moving, if it's a windy day and the trees are moving, this won't be for you. However, if you have a perfectly still setting, you can really pull out some extra detail. So, a cool feature to have, one you might not use every day, but it's there when you need it, and that's pretty cool. Number seven, custom settings. Now, both of these cameras have the options one and two on the top knob. That allows you to flip in quickly to custom settings that you've already made of your camera. For instance, I use one for wildlife. I can flip into it and now I have a very high shutter with a very low aperture. Um, however, on the R, you get a third option which just gives you more flexibility with the camera. You can set one to slow-mo, one to black and white, whatever you like. Um, there's three on the R and there's two on the a7 III. So, another point for the R. Number eight, a useful APS-C crop mode. Now, both of these cameras have the crop mode on them. However, with the a7 III, you're going to get an eight megapixel image out of that. Whereas with the R, you're still going to have an 18 megapixel picture. In fact, the crop mode on the R is almost the same as the full mode on the a7 III. Now, this is really useful when I have a lens and I want to get a little more extra reach. I can just click into APS-C mode and now my subject appears a little larger in the viewfinder. That really is the only difference from doing it in camera or doing it in post. It's just that you might be able to compose it a little better in the viewfinder itself, or you can watch that action happening a little better in the viewfinder, of course, than you could do it in post. When it's in post, it already happened. So if you want to get a little closer to maybe an animal, to some sports event that are that is down, or if you just want that option of maybe having an 85 portrait lens and then clicking a button and quickly having that 135, or say having 50 and clicking and having 85, or 35 and 50, you get what I'm saying here. It's pretty versatile to have, in a sense, two lenses at the click of a button. And being that, as I said, the APS-C mode on the R is still giving you a huge file, you have a lot of room to even crop to get that 4K image later. Number nine, stabilization. Now, both of these cameras have in-body image stabilization. They use Sony's patented steady shot. Um, but the a7 III is rated for 5 stops, whereas the R is rated for 5.5 stops. Now, that's not a huge difference, but it's noticeable. And so, why not go with the one with better stabilization? So again, another point, though a small one, to the R. Number 10, price. You didn't think I was gonna say that, did you? Well, the thing is, is that when the R came out, it was $3,200. In comparison to when the 7.3 came out, that camera was $2,000. Now that $1,200 difference is quite large and you have to ask yourself, are those nine features I just listed before worth $1,200 to you? But the thing is, today, in 2020, you don't have to ask yourself that question anymore. The cameras have gotten a lot closer in price, specifically the R. It has dropped tremendously in price. So it's now not a $1,200 question, but maybe a $400, a $300, a $200 question. And if you're buying used, you might be able to find even a better deal. So for me, since the price is now really not part of this question, the R has many more features, so why not go with it? It's a better camera, it's going to last longer, and it's going to give you better images. Now I have to say, the Sony a7 III is perhaps better on a few things, namely high ISO situations. Now I didn't really notice any difference between the cameras up to say ISO 6400. However, when I got to 12,800 and higher, I did notice that the a7 III handled the shadow areas a little better um, and it didn't introduce 
as much noise as the R did. And in fact, the R also added in a little more green noise. Um, but at ISOs lower than 12,000, which is what I shoot primarily, I really didn't notice a difference between the cameras. And that says a lot about this 42 megapixel sensor. Another thing is autofocus. Now, the a7 III has an incredible autofocus system borrowed, no, let's say taken from uh, the Sony A9. Now, that covers 93% of its sensor, which means you can get focus points pretty much anywhere. Whereas on the R, it's 68% of its sensor, which is still a huge portion. Um, however, I must say that the autofocus system is better on the a7 III. Now, with that said, for everyday real life situations, um, you're not going to notice much of a difference because for the most case, you're composing your image where your autofocus points will lie within that 68% of the image. So, hey, this one, though I give a point to the a7 III, in real life, it's not so big of a difference. Now, another thing is video. So the a7 III uses its full 6K sensor, compresses it into that 4K image. It does not pixel bin. So in theory, it should give you a better image because the R does pixel bin. It has such a big sensor that it has to use a 5K portion, eh, use pixel binning to give you that 4K video. So in theory, the 7.3 should be better, but this is another one of those situations where if you actually watch the video side by side, you might be hard pressed to see the differences. And on the same note, if you shoot in Super 35, well, the A7.3 uses an 8, meg 8 megapixel portion of its sensor, whereas the R uses an 18 megapixel portion of its sensor. So you're actually going to get a much better image in Super 35 with the R. So maybe this point is actually a wash after all but in any case they both take very very good video if i had to go from day one and tell you which camera i think you should buy i would say go with the r why not it lasts longer it has a huge huge advantage in, in its lifespan it's supposed to be one and a half times longer it also has more robust features with pixel shifting, uh, usable APS-C crop mode, and it should give you better photographs. So why not go with it? Now, if you already have the a7 III, don't feel bad. That's a tremendous camera. It's probably one of the most desired cameras on the market right now, and for a good reason. That said, for me personally, given the reasons I just listed, if you had to pick from day one, I would tell you to get the R. Hey guys, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I enjoy making these, so hey, think about subscribing. I got some more videos coming out. Um, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video for some reason and you watched the whole thing, well, I don't know what to tell you. Give me two thumbs down. All right, I'll see you guys next time.